Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining uh, the 20th um, JPI Urban Europe Urban Lunch Talk on this Friday, yeah, around noon. In these kind of webinars, we gather urban actors and the research and innovation community in and around JPI Urban Europe that we think should eat lunch together virtually and bring together their experiences and knowledges. I'm Johannes. Janis Riegler, I work with the management board in the JPI Urban Europe and the Driving Urban Transition Partnership. And I'm the host for today. I'm with here uh, today with the colleagues uh, from Formas, foremost uh, uh, Simon, who will also support this talk today um, from the technical angle. Uh, so he's backstage and he will be also the host for the chat. If you have, uh, I hope you all have uh, a nice lunch or a coffee, um, a candy or a muesli bar, whatever gives you the energy to keep going on the Friday afternoon. Um, speaking of lunch, we would be very interested in knowing from where you're dialing in. So Simon, I think you've prepared a menti slide for that, which we could share to get a feeling where people are dialing in from. Yes, sure, I will share it here. There we go. Yeah. Thank people you. Already writing answers. Oh, Thank you. Very active people already. Great. So if you don't know Menti, uh, please go on your smartphone or in your browser window to uh, menti.com and use the code which you see on the top of this slide. Then you get transferred to a poll where you can submit from where you are dialing in today. So while you're typing, I can let you know I'm dialing in from Vienna, Austria, more, uh, more detail from the ninth district, from Alsagrund, where our JPI um, Europe office is, at least the Austrian one. So we have uh, people from uh, Chisinau in Moldova, from Amsterdam, Warsaw, Munich, Tallinn, Nes Nesoden, Trent, Stockholm, Brussels, Lund, Banevetsus, I probably pronounced that horribly wrong, but welcome. Uh, Romania, Stockholm. Nice. Gothenburg. Did I miss anything? Kilch, Kiel, Kiel, Poland. Excellent. Thank you so much for this. Um, I think this is the only time when you actually need to look at the screen today. So, um, so if you want to go for a walk in your lunch break, you feel free to do so. <coughs> we will, I just realized that my foot chart here yeah, is still over. Um, so I go for a walk, um, go out of university. Um, now it was written here, university. I was confused now. Go out for a walk and you will listen to this yeah. uh, in a podcast style. That's also fine. I think we have a second question that I took. Yeah, let's do the about. second question here. The second question right now. Okay. So what type of organization do you represent? So this will help us with the monitoring from where you dial in. NGO, RTO, many people from universities, research management, consultant. Funding agency. All right, thanks for that. So in this urban lunch talk, with the title Public Infrastructures, what will they look like? We will have a look at, yeah, as the title says, of public infrastructures and might trigger some, uh, the term public infrastructures might trigger some very specific images in your brains and of your colleagues and other participants. So our infrastructures tend to be mainly understood as the physical hardware of urban areas, uh, if you will, so those streets, bike lanes, public transportation, energy grids, waste management, and so on. 
But there's much more to it than the built environment and uh, maintenance, which it brings along. Urban infrastructures are places of the everyday urban life that ensure the right of the city, ideally. They are also eventually places to think of and build this collective urban future, which we need to limit the climate catastrophe and build uh, to make our, our cities more sustainable. Um, yeah, but however, transition, transitioning urban infrastructures, besides these opportunities, also bear the risk of reproducing socioeconomic and political inequalities. And today we will discuss these and other issues with a number of uh, participants from uh, projects from the Aaron, the funded by the Aeronet call on urban transformation capacities, which was a or has been a joint ambition by the JPI of Europe and the European Commission. Um, and the EMUTC, as the acronym goes, um, funded 16 projects which bring, to, uh, bring together municipalities, uh, local public administration, researchers, universities, civil society organizations, and a lot of other actors to jointly build transformation capacities. With me here today, we have four speakers. That is Christian Peer from the T Technical University in Vienna and the Future Lab Research Center. He's involved in the Open, Open Urban Sustainability Hubs project. We have Tanu Priya Uteng from the Norwegian Center for uh, Transport Research, who's involved in the capacities for resilient and inclusive urban public transport infrastructure and build environment project. We have Johanna Rivano Ekadal, who's the head of the Center for Ersum Regional Studies and the project partner in infrastructuring the social, public libraries and the transformation capacities in austerity urbanism. And we have Milena May uh, from Jogilonian University Krakow, who's involved in the City and Go project, which deals with older, older adults co-creating a sustainable age-friendly city. I would like to turn to the panelists or to the speakers really, to the, to the lunchists, if you will, uh, since it's a lunch talk, um, to introduce themselves briefly in one to two minutes and uh, the focus of their project. So Christian, I would like to start with you. Yes, hello, welcome. Um, <clears throat> nice to be here. Um, I'm today in Munich uh, because we visit uh, several uh, districts here. Uh, so in the background, you can see one of the most recent districts uh, in Munich. It's the 13th uh, um, around the small quartier um, Prince Eugene. Um, but today I talk about uh, the uh, Opus uh, project we are doing in Vienna. Um, what our focus is, uh, is um, to uh, work with uh, public infrastructure. We uh, name it the GLAM uh, Nexus, uh, and we talk about uh, galleries, libraries, uh, archives, and museums. Uh, the reason is um, we try since several years um, to um, activate uh, co-creation in uh, urban development projects. Uh, and usually uh, we try to go outside uh, to the city and establish uh, urban uh, living labs. Um, but uh, more and more, uh, we think that it is important uh, to integrate uh, even existing uh, infrastructure like libraries, university libraries, public libraries, but also museum, etc. Um, <clears throat> to use this uh, infrastructure for co-creation and uh, for um, inclusive research as well. So uh, that is the reason why uh, our uh, method we want to apply is actually social uh, citizen science. Um, and we want to um, work together with the city administration uh, and with uh, several um, partners um, in our cities um, in the GLAM Nexus uh, to test uh, little uh, experiments uh, in social citizen science uh, to include um, uh, the citizens in the transformation of our cities. And our partners uh, in Europe are Tallinn, uh, Barcelona, and Delft, or the, uh, the Hague region, so to say. Thank you, Christian. I think we will hear more about that. 
Over to you, Tanu. Would you like to briefly introduce uh, your project or, or yourself? Thank you, Johannes. Um, so I'm Tanu Priyawuteng. I'm a senior researcher and research lead at uh, Transport Economic Institute in Oslo. And uh, we work at the interface of transport and planning, so both urban planning and regional planning. And uh, this particular project, Karen PT, uh, our focus is to you know, extend the talk on public transport and take the social inclusiveness dimension uh, forward. And we have uh, four uh, case studies area. So we have Oslo greater urban area, uh, Stockholm greater urban area and uh, Flemish regions and uh, Tallinn in Estonia. And what we are planning to do is to build this inclusive focus from different angles on uh, public transport. So in Oslo, we are studying the transit oriented development. So there's a lot of infrastructure discussion and the technicalities of creating transit oriented development, but what does it, it mean to be socially inclusive and especially for different demographic groups and age categories. Um, in uh, Stockholm, we'll be looking at uh, micromobilities and how to make the entire, you know, panning of micromobilities like uh, e-scooters more inclusive. In Tallinn, we are taking the case of fare free public transport and uh, looking to how to make it a sustainable option. In the Flemish region, uh, We'll be looking at demand-oriented uh, transport, and uh, you know, a lot of areas in Europe have had this on and off, this demand-oriented transport, but it never turns out to be a sustainable long-term plan. At the same time, it's extremely popular, especially among older adults and uh, young people. So, actually, how to make it more sustainable and an inclusive option? So, uh, our focus is to shift and to add on to this technical and technocratic approach in transport and bring in the social to be you know, more embedded in decision-making. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Johanna, would you like to go next? Um, yes, uh, thank you. And thank you for this invitation. Uh, so I'm a um, library and information studies researcher, and I'm interested in uh, the connection between information and democracy. And previously, I have studied how young women search for information about uh, contraceptives relate to their roles as citizens. Uh, that is how information concerning sexual and reproductive health is deeply connected with uh, citizenship and democracy. And then I have changed my empirical focus and have done studies on public libraries in Sweden. And for example, uh, how their steering documents are practiced in the everyday work of librarians. So in Sweden, we have a library act that stipulates that public libraries shall promote the development of a democratic society. So I have studied if and then how that is realized in practice. And I have also suggested that an understanding of libraries, not as a noun, but as a verb, is very helpful for understanding the constant development of libraries, not as something that necessarily needs to be a threat, but as an ontological observation. So not to talk about a library, but how it is librarized. Uh, and the way change is happening is something that needs to be negotiated. And I believe that librarians should, shall take an active part in proactively shaping that change through their enactments. And you already mentioned this project, ILIT, uh, standing for infrastructuring libraries in transformation. So we have this ongoing enactment of infrastructure in the title. And it is a project about how public libraries can develop further as social infrastructures. Um, public libraries already serve as important social infrastructures in society. And we are interested in this project in exploring and nurturing this role. And in times of austerity and crisis of various sorts that we are facing today with the pandemic, the war in Europe, the economic and social austerity that affect urban lives, um, even in those three countries uh, in Europe that are involved in this uh, project with a strong welfare state tradition, which is besides Sweden, the Netherlands, uh, which is the lead in the project, and uh, uh, Austria. And uh, we are interested in not only studying what is happening, but developing and using a workshop method to support and encourage community building. 
both how the library is in constant transformation and also how that transformation can be part of transforming the local community it, that it is part of in a way that supports cohesion and sustainability and not least for marginalized groups of people. So um, we are, as all of those projects, uh, uh, we come from different academic disciplines and have also non-academic partners that are part of the library li landscapes in the three countries, Netherlands, Austria, and Sweden. And we will do the work in the cities of Rotterdam, Vienna, and Malmö. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Think, uh, a lot to chew on there uh, for, for the further discussion. Over to, Lou, to you, Milena. Uh, thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Milena Mai. Uh, I'm a PhD student at the Aglonian University in Krakow, Poland. Uh, I'm engaged in the City and Co project. The full name of the project is uh, Older Adults Co Creating a Sustainable, Age Friendly City. We have a great project partners from the Netherlands and Romania. Um, our project is unique uh, as we do to uh, contribute to the perception that uh, cities can be age-friendly for all, uh, both current older citizens and future ones. Uh, under the project, uh, we are developing uh, an innovative tool for measuring various aspects of the quality of life, uh, including those recommended by uh, WHO, but also we added a new set of questions uh, about sustainability. Uh, we are developing this tool in close collaboration and active participation of uh, elder citizens and experts. Uh, already uh, 40 experts from three countries express uh, their feedback about uh, our tool's idea. Thank you. Thank you so much, Milena. Great. I would like to um, maybe just throw in a couple of questions uh, where our panelists can chew on uh, for the next maybe 25 minutes. Um, so I hope we get a discussion going and I'm pretty sure we do. Um, what role does the, um, what role does or do social public infrastructures play um, for just and equitable urban transitions? I think a lot of you have already mentioned that in the in the opening statement or by introducing your your projects i would be more interested in hearing or he, hearing more about that and how can we talk about more how can we more talk about the social and cultural infrastructures uh in the in the public debate the floor is open if you want to to speak up please just raise your hand uh, virtually or or uh on the camera christian go ahead I think it's important to understand uh, that infrastructure is not only the physical space or the uh, technical infrastructure, but in our understanding, and I think it's the same for the other projects, uh, we also talk about people, about organization, about individuals uh, working there and uh, shaping uh, the space. So um, in my opinion, uh, there is a huge chance uh, to shape infrastructure in that way and to think infrastructure as a social space within the city with all its possibilities of enabling uh, processes of co-creation and uh, democratic uh, participation. Thank you, Tanu. Yeah, thank you. I think uh, we should first of all focus on what we mean by public. Uh, there is a problem in looking at public as a flat group. The public is, is many publics within one public, right? So when we talk about inclusiveness and, and social infrastructure, the technology part is blind to the public domain because it, it is working from a more, you know, uh, we started with more economic assessment and technological assessment. And if the infrastructure passes these uh, filters, then it's approved and established. But the social is so nuanced that uh, often we, we invest billions and upon billions in creating infrastructure, which is not inclusive because the social dimension of the public has not been understood properly. So I think before we launch any infrastructure projects, it's also important to understand 
whom is this infrastructure project going to benefit? Who is it going to you know, make life easier for? And who is integrated, not just in terms of distribution effect, but also in the process of planning uh, the infrastructure project and, uh, and, and also recognizing who is gonna be benefited by it. Uh, these kind of steps are important. And till now we don't have a, like when you take a technological project, the steps are very clear. Uh, but when you take a social dimension of any project, the steps are not clear. How will you assess? What will you assess? How will you create an indicator system? How will you do a routine checkup? And how will you, you know, go back to it and, and, and fix the problem if it occurs? So I think that kind of step line of thinking and assessment is important because even with the best intention, the municipalities and the regional authorities struggle in making infrastructure socially uh, inclusive. So I think from researcher perspective, I would say that we are focusing on how to streamline the process, how to create methodologies uh, which are uh, which are easy and not too difficult and not too much embedded in black box system uh, to look at this social inclusiveness. Yeah. Thank you, Belina. Uh, I fully uh, agree with Christian and Panu. Uh, we certainly need a regular assessment by all city dwellers, citizens of uh, different ages in various situations under a certain legal and financial condition of how public infrastructure uh, is perceived, uh, but also evaluated. Uh, in many cities, uh, we know that uh, a role of trust that the public sector can satisfy uh, all needs is an illusion. Uh, and everything is also influenced here by politics, unfortunately. Johanna. When, when talking about uh, infrastructures, it can sometimes be difficult to uh, understand what is meant when we start to thinking about them also as social infrastructures, something that has been um, going on within academia for quite some time now. Um, but I think that um, uh, libraries are actually a very good uh, example to show that how uh, they are not meaningful without understanding them as what is happening in relation to the house and the collections uh, in the house and the practices that are happening there um, are what constitutes the important role that uh, a library can play in society. And therefore it uh, is not only the physical um, uh, construction, but also all the social uh, uh, enactments related to both the buildings and the collections that make up this very, very important uh, social infrastructure. So I think it serves as a very good example also, also for explaining the concept. And uh, uh, I'm pleased that um, also the, the other project here, Opus, also uh, pays attention to the cultural institu institutions that already exist in society and explore how they can play an even more um, significant role in the pressing times. Tanu. Thank you. I just wanted to highlight this. We need to understand the intersection of functions. So right, what Johanna is talking about, for example, library. Library is not just a library. It can open up to be multifunctional spaces and a, a transit oriented development like a, a, a transport hub is not just a transport hub. It, it can again open up to become, uh, you know, multifunctional hybrid spaces. So you can actually think about designing a, a transport hub where library is integrated function. You know, and, and that kind of, and, and that will service, for example, older adults very well. And this kind of shift we are seeing all around Europe that uh, uh, older adults are shifting to smaller apartments near, you know, these multifunctional spaces. So then it's also like, how do you uh, figure out to create hybridization of spaces, which is not just high density, but high activity zones. 
And that yeah. cuts down, you know, your, your transport need, your in, in a good way, not in a bad way. In a good way, it cuts down your mobility needs. It, it surfaces, a lot of functions are available on the surface. And uh, also at the design element, right? We are talking at the macro element, but the micro level of designing uh, building blocks. So you have to think about how to make the ground floor open, how to make the first floor uh, multifunctional spaces and integrate it uh, in, in these hybrid uh, thinking. So I think uh, there's a lot of cross-cutting intersectionality here among the projects, and we are essentially talking the same thing, but from different uh, directions. Thank you, Christian. Yeah, I think it's a very beautiful uh, choice of projects here uh, because they uh, beautifully um, uh, go into each other. So we have uh, the uh, projects dealing with uh, constructing new uh, infrastructure, but other projects uh, dealing with transformation of even given infrastructure in the city. And I think uh, what uh, applies to all of them concerning uh, social infrastructure is uh, that we talk about the need of uh, new uh, knowledge, uh, new forms of organization, new behavior, and you have to learn uh, to work and deal with uh, these hybrid uh, forms uh, of, of infrastructure. And uh, this is not only a question of uh, the user, you know, for example, uh, in the case of, you know, uh, citizen science, for example, there's a lot of talk about uh, what the citizens have to know uh, to be able to uh, collaborate. But no, it's also about the library staff. It's also about the staff of all the other infrastructure um, um, people. They also have to learn uh, um, um, to work together in these uh, new hybrid situations. And I think this is uh, a huge challenge uh, to all of us uh, to understand uh, what is a good way uh, to, yes, so to say, uh, to transform the service character also uh, of these public uh, infrastructures. Thank you, Christian. I, I was wondering about something because you mentioned, you mentioned already, um, we started off by highlighting that infrastructures is more as the built environment, kind of. We did that, you did that maybe implicit. We then talked about the social character, the, the social relevance for um, of public, um, public infrastructure for the city um, or for urban areas and that new forms of knowledge to maintain it are, are required. But I'm, I'm wondering how can these places in the um, or or infrastructures, it doesn't have to be a, a place where you where you actually can be not a public space, right? It could also be a place of moving or movement. Um, just let me know if you disagree with that. But how can we use not only design these places or 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 uh, maintain these places in an integrated manner so that there's a social function to it? But how can these places be? Um, functioning to collectively think and design an urban future? How can they be pl places for maintaining processes to experiment, to bring together different uh, knowledges or everyday knowledge, the tested knowledge, uh, bring together this perspective on potentially the future we need, um, urban future we need? What, what are your reflections on, on, on that uh, question slash comment? Christian. I mean, to be short, uh, it's a lot about uh, open this open up the space uh, to different uh, to different people because uh, uh, the inhabitants are different are, are, are all different. You know, you have a diversity of population, uh, and you have to have an eye on um, inclusive exclusive mechanisms uh, and to try to overcome uh, ex exclusion. Mm -hmm. Can you be a bit more precise uh, or give an example or or um... Yeah, um, you know, for example, the research libraries are usually designed uh, for the uh, higher academic uh, community. 
but they are in the center of the city. Uh, so they have a great potential to be more open also uh, to other uh, uh, kind of population. At the same time, we speak about uh, open science. Uh, we want to get in touch uh, with uh, the citizens. So there's a huge chance uh, to use uh, these uh, infrastructures in a more open and uh, alternative way. Thank you. Tanu. Uh, thanks. I think the key word here is sharing. So shared economy has been, uh, you know, in vogue in both research and policy making and practice for some time, but how to take that sharing further, shared spaces, shared mobility, and also thinking about the temporality and seasonality. So locking up all the functions in evening and night might not be a very good idea. So how do you open spaces for alternative usage in late evenings uh, and, and also seasonality because one design might work for uh, summer but it might not work for winter. So how do you think through and also for example, uh, the existing garages, if car ownership actually goes down and shared mobility goes up, what do you do with those garage spaces? So in Oslo, there's an example where it was converted to a, a sort of green space for jogging and walking uh, in, in the winters. Uh, and it was extremely popular among older adults. So thinking about this hybridization in terms of both usage and, and timings and season and needs, so, you know, uh, even if you're promoting sharing, but if you don't take care of different kinds of needs, uh, the, the project might fall. So when it comes to like shared cars, uh, one of the very basic essential missing elements was provision of child seat in, in, in shared cars. It's as simple as that. And the moment you provide it, the usage goes up. So thinking about sharing as the, the key, um, uh, key word here. Mm -hmm. Great, Johanna. Um, well, for libraries, um, uh, they have the public libraries that are then uh, for everyone in a country. Um, they have the resources for becoming informed to make good decisions um, or bad decisions, but to make decisions uh, relating to your life. And the library can provide both the resources and activities to support uh, such things happening. One problem libraries have, though, that we are interested in um, um, addressing also uh, through this project is that there are people that are um, thought to may uh, have very uh, good uh, benefit of the libraries, but are not users of them yet. Um, and um, then it's a very difficult task. And it's something that uh, uh, cultural institutions uh, are struggling with. And uh, a lot of cultural policy um, uh, efforts are addressing this. How do we reach those that are not yet there? And one thing that we will uh, then try to do is to be, as uh, have been also stressed and emphasized here from the others, invite, try to be as inclusive as possible and invite groups of people who we um, think could have a good use of, library, of the library and together with us in a workshop, uh, a creative uh, workshop, try to um, think together about what is lacking within the library as it is in order for it to be a place for them to turn to. So um, very hands-on part of the project is doing those workshops together with people that are already uh, working there um, as uh, library staff or stakeholders or the people already there, but also trying to identify groups who are not yet there and invite them to further on, not in the beginning, but further on in the project. Thank you, Milena. Thank you. Uh, one of the most important uh, pillars of our project is the participatory approach. Uh, we have involved in the project uh, older citizens uh, from uh, four different cities from three countries. Um, and older citizens uh, are invited 
to co-create a process of developing a tool that is directed to them. Uh, we will organize a series of creation sessions in each country uh, with uh, 65 plus people. Uh, we already know it and our research confirms that, for example, uh, citizens from uh, four cities could have different dreams and uh, adjusting them to the one solution is not a good strategy. Uh, moreover, uh, project implementation is abandoned in the mutual learning of project partners. Uh, as we know, it is crucial to understand each other and grasp the specific contexts of particular countries. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that uh, the approach we are adopting in Karen PT is urban living labs. Uh, it's a fancy sounding terminology, but the, but the underlying principle is the same. It's participatory approach, it's uh, co-creation, it's involving people who are not heard uh, readily and who are missing in action, so to say, and uh, how to take them further in an inclusive approach. And urban living lab in itself can be interpreted in many different ways. So all the four cases will approach it differently. So, so there is no like, uh, currently, there is no standard definition of how do you define an urban living lab. It can take many forms and 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 um, and um, structure. And we will be experimenting with different forms in the four cases. But the underlying principle is exactly what Johanna and Milena just talked about. Mm -hmm. Christian, I wanted to add that uh, huge value of uh, of uh, cooperation across Europe because uh, our partners, uh, so we see we are all so different and uh, we can learn from each other because uh, we have different uh, experiences, we come from different uh, professions. Um, and to me, uh, the term of uh, building trust is very central in our activities, not only in the first step where we as a consortia um, has to, yeah, has to uh, work uh, in a way that uh, we trust each other and um, and uh, do um, a good project together, but also in the sense of um, establishing co-creation processes in, uh, in in social infrastructures. It's a lot about trust, you know, uh, and especially when we talk about inclusion or inclusive uh, research, for example, first and the most important step is um, trust, um, because uh, there are so much uh, possibilities of misunderstandings, etc. Thank you for bringing that up. I'm um... Since many, or well, I think all of you are working with experimental methods with urban living labs or are going to because your projects are still in the, in the, in the early phases, I believe, I would be very interested in um, how you do it. What, what do you plan um, on the ground, if you will? How do you um, make sure that you have different groups participating in these co-creative methods. Um, how, how, do you, how do you run the show in the Urban Living Labs um, act research or co-creative methods? So I can go first. And uh, there's also a question actually, which links to the question raised by you, Johannes. Oh, uh, I didn't he, see that. Yeah, cool. yeah, Mia Kofi, he asked, he or she asked like, how do you integrate the feeling of belonging and ownership to public and social infrastructure in your research? Uh, and I think uh, that's critical that uh, these processes are allowed to live and sustain over a longer period of time. So it's not just a one-off survey, for example, and finished. But so our approach, which we are planning to adopt in Oslo area is establishing a physical structure you know, like a pavilion near the transit hubs and let it run for some months. 
And, uh, and this will be established in cooperation with various stakeholders, Oslo municipality, the railway authority, and, uh, you know, uh, Bolt and Tier, like the companies running the micromobility e-scooters. So uh, uh, various stakeholders will, will be involved to physically establish this as the station. And then we will invite uh, many different groups to participate in focus groups, in, in workshops, and like school children, um, non-Western immigrants, living in the area, activity centers for elderly, uh, libraries, having a pop-up library within this pavilion as well. Uh, and the idea is to let it run over some period of time and also discuss with the, the municipality if it can you know, run over many years. Uh, and, and have some sort of activities over there, even when the project is, is finished. That's our original idea. And the sense of ownership comes when, you know, when you are living in that area and you, you, you find some sort of, the idea is to gather knowledge on what is missing. When we say inclusive development, why do they feel excluded? Why do different groups feel excluded and how to make it more inclusive? And then make incremental changes. And then go around and again talk to people. What do you think about this change? Uh, what is missing? And and let it uh, become an ongoing process. I think that sense of ownership and belonging in letting the community feel that you have, you know, added value by proposing solutions which are being uh, launched. So it's not really coming from us, but it's coming from you, and we are facilitating the process. So rather than ex uh, rather than experts, uh, the last line is like we become facilitators in that process of co-creation. Yeah. Thank you so much for this. This was a was was a very very um, good comment. I liked it a lot because it has so many different angles to it. Right. You you described that you that you um, want to facilitate this um, experimentation also over the running time of the project where then eventually experimentation around this uh, station, around this, this hub becomes the norm where you go on uh, with the process. I, I think that is uh, very, very inspiring. Do we have some other comments from the panelists? Lunchists, I'm not sure if that is a word, but I just made it up now. Uh, Milena. Uh, I would like to add that we use the same approach. Uh, as I said, we, we plan to organize a series co-creation session with other people uh, and uh, other citizens uh, will create a tool as and we as uh, product partners will facilitate the process so i think that we we use the same approach as Anna said thank you johanna uh, our approach is to um, uh, address different target groups throughout the, the project in order to make it ethically um, sort of um, uh, as ethically uh, uh, thought through and um, good as possible. So we start with people who are working at libraries, uh, librarians, and uh, go uh, do we sh will shadow them, uh, that is sort of a participatory observation and conversation with them about their work. And we will then continue with uh, stakeholders, so management and politicians and uh, people who write the policies for the libraries. And th then moving on to observing the library spaces and who is there and uh, who is not there. and. Uh, through uh, those stages, we will then, uh, together with the people that we interact with over time, uh, also try to find out who we would like to invite and then go and uh, connect with uh, associations that uh, um, work with uh, that group that we have identified together during the process. And throughout the process, we will do these workshops where people are invited to do zines about um, um, their um, ideas and thoughts about the role that uh, the library can have. And th those scenes will be published also on the website that is created. We have a social designer in our group who will do um, uh, the design of both the website and together uh, with us, but it's mostly her who develop a methodological guide that then will be available on the website also for others to continue to use this 
method uh, over time. Excellent. Great. Inspiring too. Christian. It's a bit the same uh, in terms of sustainability. Uh, we try to use uh, already given infrastructure, already given organizations, and to carefully uh, mix up uh, new approaches with already given processes. So at the moment, uh, the starting moment, it's a very, very responsible um, time to identify ongoing processes and to identify intersections where it makes really sense uh, to combine uh, the project uh, approach uh, with ongoing and existing uh, things. I think this is uh, a strategy uh, which um, supports uh, sustainable development in general. Mm -hmm. That brings us actually to a poll question, which we have open for the public or for the participants in this um, in this webinar. So, what role, uh, Simon? Are we ready to share it? Uh, yes, box. So I'm going to share the poll here. Yeah, I'm launching it to you. Yeah, you see it? Yes. So what is the role of public infrastructures for the transitioning of urban areas towards sustainable urban futures? You have a couple of uh, answers here, which you're invited to use, or you just pop your answer in the chat. And I would like to keep this uh, question open to the panelists as well. Uh, what, are, what, what are your thoughts on this? Well, we will influence the audience now, no? <laughs> then let's give them another uh, another minute. Yeah, but Johannes, I don't think they can vote. No, you don't need to vote. You you can yeah. express. You have the right to to speak up. So okay. you're, you're in the <laughs> yeah. uh, have an advantage here. So Tano, I think you want to share something. Well, for me, I think all the points. It's not just one exclusive function, but actually it's a mix of everything you have written down here and plus more uh, in terms of creating livelihood, actually, uh, giving opportunity to have pop-up kitchen and pop-up restaurants for people who are not gainfully employed, but they want to transition into something. So giving them the opportunity for that as well. Uh, so I think this uh, pop-up culture, I'm all for it. And uh, the social infrastructure places can become an experimentation ground in that sense as well. So I think area uh, arenas to experiment, yes. Uh, but uh, everything you have pointed here uh, uh, qualifies. Thank you, Christian. That was an answer which did not influence anybody because it was, uh, you could pick anyone. Some more reflection on the question, maybe, or or links you see to your project. Christian. I think the question uh, from the audience is crucial uh, for all this function. How can you make these places uh, being uh, so that you feel that you belong to it? Uh, and I think this is a very difficult task uh, concerning uh, groups uh, which are not already uh, in contact with this infrastructure or where there is a certain social distance maybe um, and this um, yeah we have to work on it i think uh, because it's more easy to work uh, with uh, people which already are there which are already working there or using this space uh, it's more easy to transform their behavior for example but uh, you know to invite uh, new people in terms of social inclusion this is the hard part of the project i mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. Thank you, Christian. Good, we have a couple of minutes left. And I think it might be very good if we um, let the participants or speakers wrap up this discussion. So if you, if you have uh, some reflections on how would you sum up the discussion here? And also if you could highlight uh, what we did not touch up on here today yet, which might be interesting to take up in another lunch talk or or another coffee with you. Um, do you have some reflections on that? How would you wrap it up and uh, what's the way forward on this topic?
Nobody wants to go first. I'm going to call names. Joanna, would you like to start? That uh, since we all share an interest in uh, uh, proceeding with the research, because uh, as you uh, have mentioned, we are in the planning stage as of yet, at least here in Sweden, uh, in the ILIT project. Um, one uh, obstacle that we face is how we can uh, make uh, the people that we want to participate with us in the in those projects uh, to become part of the projects. It's a very, very difficult task. And I think it also um, requires a lot of reflection and um, it is therefore also good that uh, those projects uh, that we have this opportunity to work with them over the period of three years, because in that way, as was mentioned here, um, that it's very important with building up trust and uh, th that time span gives us the possibility of doing that, I believe. And um, in doing that, we, we can hopefully manage not to do arrive at sort of the dream uh, end of uh, or the dream uh, some of people that we would like to include but at least uh, come to uh, some steps ahead and uh, together then these projects will make uh, a great uh, difference I think and uh, therefore um, I think it's a uh, it's an a difficulty that also is exciting to uh, work with. I Thank think you, that's... Anna. Yeah. Milena, do you have some thoughts? Yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, from my perspective, uh, population aging is really important challenge. Uh, how to adjust uh, public infrastructure to the needs of a growing number of older people in cities. So I think that it's a huge problem for the European cities and uh, we should uh, find out uh, some solution, good solution for that. Thanks, Tanu. Yeah, I would just like to highlight that in all this discussion on urban and cities, we should not forget the regional centers and the regional dimension of things. Because when if, if we recently did an analysis in Norway, and when we look at the entire country, older adults will be living in these small towns and district centers, rather than uh, you know the main hub of the cities and urban areas. But at the same time, we should explore the opportunity of linking these uh, areas together and having creative solutions in even small uh, places uh, for, for, a, for a good development overall. Thank you. And Christian. Yeah, um, I wanted again to underline uh, the process of cooperation. It's really important uh, to learn to be cooperative across uh, different borders uh, and across uh, the sections uh, because we are so specialized uh, and this especially applies to science uh, itself because <laughs> Uh, we have to think uh, out of the box, uh, you know, and um, to be productive together. Excellent. Thank you so much. Great. Before we close um, this, um, yeah, this 20th urban lunch talk, we started this, this series in 2018, so four years ago. And uh, I, I think it's still a very nice format. And I would like to thank you all for, for these reflections. Um, but before we close this, we have um, just a hint that we are in the JPI Urban Europe have launched our new seven year program called Driving Urban Transitions, which is a European partnership between member states and the European Commission. And uh, I would like to invite all of you to have a look at this new program. Simon put the, the link in the chat now. Um, there are some opportunities to engage, to uh, submit proposals. We have a call open right now. And uh, I think it might be interesting for many of you today um, to have a look at this. Um, yeah, are there any final remarks? 
Simon, did I forget something important? Besides that, uh, we encourage you also to sign up for our newsletter, which- Yeah, but, but speaking of the DUT, I mean, uh, there are many similar similarities and, uh, and they're crossing paths a little bit, the ENUTC uh, into the DUT. Could you, could you tell us just briefly about that? Yeah, I would not, I'm, I'm still, uh, besides the name, I don't think much has changed because the ENUTC call wrapped up a series of JPI or Europe calls and already built, we already designed it, programmed it as a bridge towards the, the new DOT partnership back then when we developed this uh, call, this ENUTC call, which is already a while ago. Um, so I think it was also mentioned here that this, um, in different words, it was mentioned here, but the ENUTC projects, um, they build potentially a critical mass, which can be very helpful for um, also to provide input for DOT in the strategic processes and to see uh, what are the needs uh, we need to have a look at in the further programming of this, um, of this partnership or of this new program. So I would be very happy. Um, I will be, uh, or I am very excited to see all your work, to keep up to date with all your experience, uh, experiments, sorry. Uh, you have planned in Oslo, in Vienna, uh, all over the place. Um, I'm really curious about that. So please keep us know what you, what you have planned. And I think we have a midterm meeting in, in the projects at some point, and then another chance for a um, lunch talk to keep up to date about the, pro, uh, pro, um, the progress of the project. Yeah, and, and for, the, uh, for the progress, it's the newsletter signing up to, to keep up, keeping, uh, keeping updated all, all the time for both uh, EUNITC, uh, JPA Urban Europe, DUT. So to keep up being updated. It's a newsletter and news alerts. Then you'll yes. have it all. So yeah. I'm gonna post it here in the link. Exactly. Thank you, Simon, for this. Great, um, thank you so much. I hope you had all a nice lunch and enjoyed the discussions here today. Uh, thank you, Christian, Tanu, Milena, Johanna, um, for joining today. Also, thank you for, uh, to the ENUTC management team and the former's team in particular to uh, set up this Urban Lunch Talk. And keep your eyes open for the next one. This is planned for January, at least in the ENUTC. There might be another one coming up before. But ENUTC Lunch Talk, January next year. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great thank weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a great weekend. Bye.